YouTube people, can you hear me? Can you hear me, YouTube people? Hello? Are you able to hear me? Okay, well. <clears throat> yes, okay, fantastic. Thank you, Nina. Whew, okay, I think it's working now. So I'm talking to people on Instagram as well as on my YouTube channel. So hello, everybody. Uh, you may know me al already from my videos, and I don't usually do this kind of thing much. Although recently I've been doing these live lessons, live dogma lessons. So I've got a student and it's all recorded live and people can watch it. Um, I hope you like the format, but today I'm doing something different. It's just me on my own. And I would like to, first of all, introduce myself. I'd like to tell you about uh, what I do. Uh, I'm an English teacher, you might have already figured that out. And also, I will tell you about my English through role plays course, and I will try to make this interactive, way more interactive than than ever in the past, because usually I can't focus on speaking and talking to people, but this is different, okay? So I can see we've got uh, wonderful people here. So Jacob, Rod, Helen, Nina, uh, um, Rod, uh, Diana. Okay, guys, welcome. Tell me where you're from. Tell me where you're from. I'm I'm quite curious. I actually know some of you. I know some of you, but uh, not all of you. So please tell me where you're from. Also, here on um, Instagram, um, <laughs> I'm now I'm now looking at inst at my phone. Yeah, so maybe it it will seem strange because I haven't exactly figured this out. But uh, I'm now talking to people on Instagram. So it, it looks like Ro Rod Rob is there. Yekaterina, and also, uh, I think your name is Fabio, Fabio or Fabio. Um, so thanks for watching, everyone. And uh, I think I should be able to answer uh, the questions on YouTube as well as on my Instagram. But please forgive me if I skip something or, or something happened. So Jacob is from Venezuela. Okay, what a lovely country. I would love to go there one day. That sounds like uh, a lot of fun, Venezuela. I, I used to have a teacher when I was uh, in London. I used to have a uh, teacher, a student. I am the teacher. I used to have a student from Venezuela and, and she was so much fun, you know, very friendly, um, very talkative, very like, mm, I like like the the, the 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 temper. You have got a lot of like temper. Yeah? I like it. We've got Diana here from Ukraine. Okay, again, I have taught a lot of students from Ukraine, and you guys are doing brilliantly in the Euros. I watched your game, Ukrainian game, and it was fantastic. Uh, so um, okay, then we've got Yamin. Yamin sixty four has joined on Instagram. Uh, okay, I I can see Rob is watching this both on Instagram and YouTube. Rod, Rod you are <laughs> the most extreme case. You want to watch it on both channels. Okay, so if if you guys don't know me, my name is Zdenek and I am an English teacher. I am from the Czech Republic and I'm currently living here as well. Um, mm. So English is actually not my first language, but, uh, but I've been teaching English for a really long time. I've got a... a I'm not the youngest, okay, anymore. So I've been teaching English for more than 10 years and I, I enjoy this. It's it's a cool job. Um, I have got uh, uh, several uh, teaching qualifications. I've got a master's degree and um, Cambridge qualifications, CELTA, as well as uh, DELTA, but I didn't do the module three yet because uh, it's annoying. It's a, it's an assignment. I, 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 I put it on hold, okay, maybe one day. But the most important part, module two, the practical part, uh, I managed that uh, quite well. And and yes, it's it's a tough qualification, but it's important for me as an English teacher to 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 have these qualifications because then, um, well, it's first of all, it's good to to have this on CV, but also uh, I think this is how people can trust me, yeah, because they know I'm a real teacher. I'm not kidding you. You know, I'm not pretending or something because you have got a lot of teachers online who just who just speak the language and they they think they can do the job. Well, they they do it in a certain way, but uh, it's always good to be qualified. OK, so, uh, OK, Nina says that that I'm very young. Well, thank you very much. 
thank you very much. That's very kind of you. I, I feel uh, much more, uh, I feel much better now. Uh, thank you for the compliment. And um, okay, so um, any, any interesting comments here? Uh, you guys can interrupt me at any time, and if I notice the comment, good luck with that. <clears throat> uh, then, uh, obviously, I'll try to respond, because I want this to be interactive, as I said. So, uh, I have told you about my qualifications. Regarding experience, I have taught English in a lot of different ways. I have taught low levels, but to be honest, in most cases, I, I have focused in my, during my career i have focused on higher level students i don't know why but it's just it's just more natural for me and i think i i tend to do better with higher level students uh, i'm speaking about the upper intermediate and advanced students and uh, whenever i worked for a language school uh, and i've worked for a few um it was always the same the same kind of pattern i ended up teaching higher levels I guess it's because what some there were some moments when they asked me, what do you prefer, Zdenek, or would you like to take these lower level classes? And I would most likely refuse that. And whenever they offered me higher levels, I was more up for it. But that doesn't mean that I have never taught lower levels or beginners. I've done that as well. Uh, regarding the age of my students, I've taught mostly adults or young adults, which we are talking 17, 18 years of age and uh, uh, students in their 20s, 30s. But I've taught students in their 40s, 50s and 60s as well. Uh, I think it's very interesting to get this, this kind of different experience. Um, so um, yeah, Rod says that he agrees that, that I'm very young. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. That's, that's very kind of you. Um, so um, um, also, um, I, I told you I'm from the Czech Republic. That's true. Yeah, Czech is my first language. Czech Republic, if, never heard, if you have never heard of this country, it's, it's a, a small, rather a small country in the middle of Europe. Um, the people from the West say that we are, we are Eastern Europeans, but th the way Czech people perceive it is that we are um, from the Central Europe, yeah, because we are right next to Germany. But either way, uh, I don't, I don't really care so much about it. I'm not so patriotic about this. But uh, the point is, uh, I'm from the Czech Republic, and uh, my first language is Czech. However, I have also taught in the UK, in the United Kingdom, in in England, specifically in London. I've worked for two language schools in London. I don't know if I should say the names at this point. I, I think it, I can do that. So one of them was called MLI. Uh, it's it was um, uh, an Irish an Irish school, but they had a center. They had a summer camp center in Wembley in London. Wembley is uh, an area in London. It's like in in West London, and that's also where the national stadium is. And I have taught there for three years uh, every summer. So I always went to England for summer. Um, I taught there at the summer camp, and then I came back to the Czech Republic. But in 2019, I decided to to go on uh, on another adventure, and I went. I also, uh, I basically after the summer camp in Wembley, I decided to stay in London, and I I taught uh, for a language school called Speak Up London, uh, which is based in Oxford Street in in central London. Yeah, so I've got I've got quite quite a lot of experience teaching English, and I've taught um, students of different nationalities, and this is probably the most interesting aspect of of this job for me because I, I I really like the, uh, the diversity and uh, the the possibility to teach students from different countries. It's just very exciting for me. I do have some Czech students, and I have taught some Czech students. I'm not saying I don't like to teach them, you know, but to be honest. If I can teach uh, students from different countries, I'm I'm very happy to, because it just it's just like added added element. So I've taught a lot of students from uh, Russian speaking countries, from Ukraine, from Russia, from Kazakhstan. I've taught a lot of students from Arabic countries as well, from Arab world, uh, from United Arab Emirates, uh, Iraq, um, uh, Syria. I've taught students from a lot of Arabic countries, also from Egypt, some a few Africans, but not that many, but a few Africans. I've taught a lot of South Americans. That was mainly in London because there are a lot of them there. So students from Brazil, Argentina, 
Mexico and, and other countries. Mexico is actually Central Central America, right? And uh, obviously, I've taught a lot of lot of Europeans as well. So so that's my uh, uh, work experience, and I think it has helped me. Uh, to understand the English learner, you know, because because everybody is a little bit different. Everybody struggles with slightly different things when it comes to pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar. Everybody has slightly different um, sort of uh, problems with the language. Yeah, so I think this has helped me to understand things more, more let's say globally. <laughs> uh, so uh, and I, I I really enjoy this this kind of dynamic when I have a class full of students where where the students. Um, use the language in a natural way in order to communicate with each other because they can't speak each other's language. This is the best in my opinion. So I enjoy doing that the most and I've done some of it. I've also taught classes when everybody was uh, everybody was uh, of the same nationality. Like last year I taught uh, a class of 15 Russian students, for example, or I've done uh, some of this at a high school in the Czech Republic where everybody was just Czech. Not the most enjoyable thing for me because, um, um, like I said, there is not this natural need that the student has to communicate to really use the language in the natural in an in a natural way. Okay, now um, I also so I've taught for language schools in the past, but these days I'm trying to teach privately a lot as well. I say trying because um, I think I I could. Imagine taking on more students that I currently have, but uh, actually to become an independent English teacher online, it looks like it's easy because you see teachers everywhere. You see uh, all these English teachers online and it, you're being bombarded with their marketing and all that. But the thing is like for me, it's 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 a actually fierce competition, you know, because everybody wants to grab these teachers and we have to offer a lot of things for free. To attract everybody's attention. That's why I'm doing this, actually. Yeah, I just, I just need you to know about me. I need you to know who I am because otherwise you have no idea. Well, some of you know me privately, I guess. But um, if you have never uh, talked to me, or if you've never seen me, then, then I, this is my way of introducing myself to you. You know. Um, yeah. So I also have a podcast called Zdenex English Podcast, which is a podcast for English learners. I would say. It's suitable for upper in, for intermediate, upper intermediate, and advanced learners. I often invite interesting guests. Some of them are watching today, interestingly enough, like uh, Rob. Rob has been on my podcast at least twice. Rod, another uh, teacher, has been on my podcast as well. So um, the next English podcast, you can find it wherever you listen to your podcast or uh, my host is actually Podbean. So if you go to podbean.com and you type in the next English podcast, you can subscribe to me there. When it comes to this YouTube channel, it's as you can see, I don't have that many subscribers. That's because it's just something I would say I just do on the side. I'm not. <laughs> I've I've been doing the podcast for a long time, yeah, like for let's say seven years. But when it comes to this YouTube stuff it's kind of new to me and when it comes to instagram it's completely new to me so i'm just trying to explore the all these areas just to just to learn things yeah so i'm okay I'm, I'm making this too long this is ridiculously long uh, i didn't mean to do that uh, but i also want to tell you that i develop a board game i'm developing a board game called kingdoms of deceit and one day i'd like to get it published it's a it's it's like a passion project you know it's i don't i know it's not gonna you know like be a massive hit or anything but i do have a, a nice little community of playtesters people who play my game very interesting very cool um but it's the, the game is a bit convoluted in that it's not for everyone it's not your classic uno game where you have a few cards and then you play the cards this 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 has a lot of rules and so it's like for people who who don't mind playing more complicated games but anyway um board games are one of my passions one of my hobbies um i i have a discord server which i would like to invite you in part of it yet i think it's a really cool place where you can practice english with uh a, um uh, very interesting people. We've got some really cool active members who host their events. Some of them are watching now. And um, this is a way you can practice English for free and um, make friends online. 
and be part of a, a growing, cool growing community, uh, how can you join this Discord server? It's very simple. Go to teachersdenek, teachersdenek.com. Yeah, I'm just I'm just typing it in the chat here on um, here on YouTube. But the, the Instagram people, it's it's gonna it would be too difficult for me to type it in the Instagram. So teachersdenek.com, and there you will see a lot of different. At the top, you've got all these um, social media icons here, so you can click. Anywhere you want to follow me, you can click that. And and what I would recommend in particular is the Discord server, because I think um, while you can of course like um, see my posts and listen to my podcast, that's that's all well and good. But when it comes to Discord, the Discord server, I think that that's like going the extra mile if you are a learner, because there you can really become active. You can. Um, you can speak there yeah we have different voice channels and you can have your voice heard which i think is important as an english learner not just to passively listen because i know a lot of students who just listen watch youtube videos listen 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 it's amazing you get a lot of input which is important but then you have to really start speaking the language to really use it on a daily basis uh in in some kind of um uh, a logical way in in a mean sorry not not the right word in a meaningful way it has to be meaningful so so for example uh you you speak english to a people who have the same interest you share the same interest as you so we've got this this event manny has his event about films right so people who are interested in films like films they can join the event that manny is hosting on the discord server i'm just giving one example yeah uh, so this this is this is really uh, this is really important that you find some sort of something that something that grabs your attention, you know, and then because everybody by nature everybody is a little bit lazy. Let's be honest, I am like that as well. We are we procrastinate. We all have our big plans and ambitions how how we want to learn uh, this that and the other, but uh, more often than not. It doesn't happen for us, right? And and the reason is because we are lazy, or or we set the, the the goals too high because priorities. You know, we have things we need to do. Uh, we don't have the right uh, mindset for it, and the you just need to find some kind of motivation. You know, something that will keep you going. And I think the best way is to do it through interests. Yeah, something that really interests you. So you play games. You you like films sports football yeah and then you can become part of a, a community yeah so um so i've just i've just uh, tried to in, uh, introduce yourself invite i've invited you to my discord server hopefully some of you will join and and become uh, uh, an active member uh, it's honestly it can only benefit you the, all this stuff is for free all the podcasts that i do are for free obviously but of course, um, of course, as an English teacher, I also need to make ends meet. I need to uh, find a way to pay the rent. Yeah. So for me, um, I need to find some students that I can teach privately. Uh, but I am like the private lessons with me, one on one lessons or one to one lessons, face uh, face to face or online lessons. That I would say for a lot of people, this is um, this is not affordable. Yeah. A lot of people can't afford it because maybe they are from uh, an economically poor country or it's just too much money or I don't know, for whatever reason. So a lot of people can't afford it, which I understand. And that's why I'm trying to find ways to make it cheaper for people. And uh, But at the same time, uh, often when something is cheap, it's low quality. Yeah? But I don't want to do that. I want to keep the quality high. So, so I'm trying to find ways how I can make this happen. So that's why I created this course. Now, a disclaimer, everyone, a disclaimer, yeah? Um, a marketing disclaimer. This, what you are watching now, it's a questions and answers about this English Through Board Games course. But it's not a classic webinar that you click sometimes and, and then it's like somebody is following a sales script and they are perfect. And they know what they are doing. No, I'm I'm the exact opposite. Yeah, <laughs> and the reason for this is because first of all, I I haven't got so much experience with this. Secondly, I I can't stand Mar. I can't stand the, the people who are too salesy and who are trying to manipulate me in order to buy the product from them. I just cannot stand it. I can't bear it. I just 
can't because I know what the, exactly what they are doing. Yeah, uh, they are trying to make me feel guilty, and and this is exactly the kind of approach I will never. Well, if I ever take it, then please. Uh, please tell me because I don't want to end up like one of these people. It's just, it goes against my principles. I don't want to lose my integrity. Maybe I'm being stupid. I don't know. Okay. But the point is, uh, this is probably not a classic webinar. I'm just going to show you what this is. You can, uh, you can ask questions. Um, just, I will just be honest with you. I'll tell you if this is suitable for you or not. Uh, you know, and I'll tell you what you can get. And it's you won't you can't you won't expect from me any anything like if you don't if you don't pay me uh, by um, uh, midnight, uh, you will not get this discount or ninety percent off price, which is a total lie usually, right? It's a total lie when people say ninety percent off uh, things like that. I just can't stand it. I think this is aggressive marketing, and and yeah, just don't get me started on that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so basically the reason reason I need to do something like this is because, like I said, I think lessons, uh, private lessons are uh, uh, unaffordable for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, to be honest, a lot of people also prefer native speakers, yeah? So it's a, it's a little bit difficult for me, for someone like me. I mean, you can hear my English, yeah? You can hear that I'm, I don't have a native speaker accent. Although I wouldn't say I have a particularly strong, I don't think I have a particularly strong Czech accent. Um, I, I've never had a problem with anybody. Nobody has ever complained about my English when I was their teacher. So I don't think this is an issue at all. And a lot of people should just give me a chance, you know, just give me a chance. And I will prove to you that I can do it. I can help you with your English. And that's what all I'm asking for, you know. Uh, for me, it's tough because when you have someone like I don't. I, okay, I will not give you any names because that would be unfair. But you've got a lot of uh, YouTubers, podcasters, English teachers online who just look good, you know, who have a face of a uh, 25 year old pretty girl, and, and well, the opposite, <laughs> the opposite of me. I'm a man in the first place. Yeah, not the youngest. But thanks for for saying that. I'm, I'm still young. I guess I'm young at heart. But but the point is, it's difficult. It's difficult for me to compete with these native speakers. Yeah, so so um, that's why I also try to do things a little bit differently. Yeah? I'm trying to stand out from the crowd by having a different approach. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I started doing English through board games. Yeah, so I, behind me there are a lot of games. As you can see, I'm a big board game fan. I developed an online course for board games, but. Um, it was it the course is really cool i think i took a few participants took the course uh i did i i developed it last summer but um, the participants have to buy a tabletop simulator which is like a game on steam it's too complicated they have to jump through a lot of hoops so um that's why i came up with a new course which i think is more feasible more doable yeah and let me tell you about this course you might have already heard about it Again, um, it has already happened once. So we've got, we've, uh, it has gone through once. Uh, we've got um, um, some ex participants, so to speak, who could tell you about the experience. I think some of them are probably watching this now. And uh, I would like to relaunch the course because um, why not? You know, and that's why I'm talking to you, I suppose, because we are looking for people. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about the course then. Eh? How about that? Um, so, do we have any questions? Not any. Now is the point when I would like you really to ask some questions. Yeah, if anything is not clear, um, yeah, I'm just looking at some comments here on on YouTube. Some people respect me for not trying to manipulate anyone. You know, I like that. I like that. Um, hopefully, I'm not shooting myself in the foot, you know, because <laughs> because if I were if I were good at manipulating people, if I could hypnotize them with my salesy pitch and things like that, I should I could be able to actually make a lot of money and become a, a rich teacher. But um, would I be would I be then happy with myself? I don't think so. Uh, so. Um, Okay, Nina. Nina is asking me what the price of a private lesson with me is. Thank you for that question, Nina. 
Yeah, I won't lie to you. Uh, currently, it's 20 euro 45 minutes, which, to be honest, I think it's a standard price that most teachers around me, like in, in my town, do. It's possible that some teachers online charge more. It really depends. You know how this... You know how this is worked out usually. If you have a lot of students, then you can charge more, you know, because uh, you are in a position where you can choose, right? Choose the students that that you want to work with. Those that pay the it's like it's like how economy works basically, uh, microeconomics or I don't know what it is. Uh, so um, twenty euros, uh, it's my standard price. I don't really I don't really change this change this much. And um, I really, if it's a one-to-one -one lesson, I focus on my student and, and I can teach in lots of different ways. So you have, you've probably seen the dogma lessons. Yeah, I've done the, I can do that. I do that with most of my students because surprisingly, this is what most of my students enjoy. So for example, I teach this guy um, who is a reporter. He's a football reporter, yeah? one of my coolest students. He's a football reporter, very high level student, advanced student. And we just talk about football most of the time, just about right now we're talking about the Euros. Uh, we just discuss mm, his interviews and videos. We, we watch online videos of interviews of the football players and the matches. We discuss what the commentators say. It's super cool, super cool for me and uh, super natural for me to teach in this kind of way. No course book, not at all. And of course, we just we don't just talk. Yeah, I correct. I correct my student. I uh, we we practice things. If if I notice there is a problem, let's say pronunciation issue, for example, the student uh, occasionally makes a mistake uh, in the w sound. Yeah, so instead of uh, uh, w, he 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 says v. Yeah, so we just do some drilling and things like that. Like it's like focuses. It focuses on the mistakes that that the student makes. But I. I can also teach using a book. You know, I'm very flexible. I have enough experience for that. So, so that's that's my that's my uh, usual price. But I, as I said, I know this is expensive for us, for some people. I know some people can't afford it, and I totally get it. And that's why I created this course, which I think is is the price is not too bad. I'm gonna tell you really soon. But first, let me tell you what this course contains, and please ask me questions. Yeah. So I'm. I'm I'm looking at your questions as I speak. We have Vlad here from Ukraine. Vlad, nice to have you here as well. Uh, congratulations on the win yesterday. What, what a fantastic performance against Sweden! I watched the match. I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I think it was it was hard for you because a lot of your players got injured, and I think you deserve the win. And Andrei Shevchenko, oh, what a player! I have so much respect for him. But. Um, um yeah so I'm, I'm telling you now about the english through role plays course yeah so um, it's an online course first of all so you're not gonna come to my house um i do have one private student that comes to my house she was here uh, today actually she's a doctor uh but i i think it would be impossible for you guys to come to my house you live in poland ukraine uh venezuela like <laughs> It's impossible. You would have to have a private jet or something like that, uh, which wouldn't be feasible. So it has to be done online. Another little issue is the time difference. Yeah. So of course I live in Europe, and my time zone is Central European time. So right now it is actually half past seven for me. Yeah. So obviously, obviously, I was trying to find some sort of ideal time of this core of the lessons for the of this course, and. Uh, this is what I came up with. So uh, the lessons start at 8 p.m. Central European time. So in about 25 minutes, that's when the lessons would start. The course consists of six lessons. Each lesson is 80 minutes long. Yeah, so 80 minutes, 80 mi uh, six 80 minute lessons, and it stretches over two weeks. So we start next Monday, and um, Basically, it's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the next week exactly the same thing, and um, it's always eighty minutes, and yeah, so that's that's the length, that's what you're getting. Uh, it's not very long, I know. It's just six lessons, but that's the thing. Like I often go for very ambitious projects, and this time I wanted to do it a little bit simpler. Yeah, I want to do it simpler. I want the price to be affordable for people, and I want to give people the feel of of the the way you can learn English. 
maybe it's I, I want it to stand out. I want it to stand out from the crowd, so I'm doing it differently. That's why it's called English through role plays course. It's not just English lesson, general English lesson. No. Um, as for the as far as the level goes, the this course is suitable for upper intermediate and advanced students. So it's for B2 and C1 level students. I would like to um, do some kind of variant of this course, which would be for intermediate students, for B1 students. I think I can make it happen as long as I have enough people interested. So if, if I have enough people at the intermediate level that would like me to do the course, then we can make it happen. I need at least four participants. Yeah, four participants is the minimum. Because if I have only three, the way I structured the course, the way I designed this course, it wouldn't work. Yeah. So the first course, the first course, the English through role plays course, there were four students. There were four students and it worked really well. I think it should always be an even number as well. Yeah. Because a role plays, it's, it's always going to be two people talking to each other. But uh, I've also got some sort of cap. So it is eight students. I don't go over eight students. If by miracle, a lot of people were interested in this course, I would say, no, you need to join the next one because it would be too many for me to handle. Yeah. Now, what's, so why should you take this course? Well, if you feel like you don't have enough speaking practice in your life, if you feel like uh, you would like to work on your speaking fluency, because you see, the reason I want to focus on this is that because I know I've got a lot of students who listen to podcasts, watch videos, and watch Netflix, and play games. But do they really speak? I even if they play games, do they really sort of make long sentences, trying to make a point, uh, get a point across, trying to use the language in a natural way? Or is it just like when they play a game, do they just say, um, careful, there's somebody shooting behind you, uh, I'm dead, kill him, kill him. You know, this is not natural language. So with the with these role plays, that's the main focus. You see, if you have a course book, a classic course book, you always develop the four skills, right? Reading, listening, speaking, writing. And then you learn grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, everything is kind of in integrated in that. But this course is it's more focused specifically on speaking fluency. There is also vocabulary in it. So I have target language vocabulary, which I teach through fun role plays, which I've designed. Um, um, so it's like a listening exercise. Basically, you watch a little video and then uh, th then you analyze the language. But that, that's just like the, the first part of it. The main part are always the role plays. That's where, as I say in one of my ads, that's where the magic happens. Yeah. And that's where you guys get really super active. Um, it's designed in a way that um, basically you always talk to someone. So it's not like me just talking to my students. You might have it in traditional classrooms. And in some, it's true, guys, I'm sorry to say that, but in some Asian countries, you still have it. That you have a teacher uh, doing what's called frontal teaching, yeah? teaching 40 students. The students don't really speak. They just listen to what the teacher is saying and they make notes. It's, it's like a lecture, a university lecture. But that's not really how you should teach English these days, or at least uh, that's what I would like to think. And uh, the communicative method is is the most uh, it's the most prevalent method these days. You know, that's what the most teachers use. That's uh, what they say in Cambridge, Oxford. Um, the ELT industry prefers the communicative method. So that, that's based on a lot of interaction. Students have to talk to each other, a lot of pair work, a lot of group work. And that's how this course is designed. It uses this communicate communicative method. So you would always talk to somebody, even if it's uh, just sort of uh, talking about the language that you are learning, the target language. By the way, the target language, it's going to be idioms, phrasal verbs, slang expressions, all different things. And then... When, once you get the hang of the target language, you practice it a little bit, then the, in the final activity, in the role play, you are gonna, you know what a role play is, right? A role play is a speaking activity where um, I'm gonna put you in, in a pair with someone, you're gonna work in pairs with somebody, uh, and you're gonna get a card, and on this card, you have a role. It's like, 
it's like you're in a theater you're you're playing a role of an actor you're an, an actor almost right and for example um your role could be um you need to buy a ticket uh, but you don't have money for it, so you have to convince uh, you have to convince the, the ticket seller to give you a discount. Usually, I like to create fun, controversial ro role plays. I, this was not the best example, but usually it has to lead to some kind of an argument or something funny. You know, that's that's always the way I design the role plays. The people who took the course they know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so. It, and each each of these lessons is 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 dedicated to a different theme. Yeah, there's a different theme. So one of the themes is, for example, crime. Yeah, so in this in this role play, uh, the people who are involved in the role play they are criminals. Well, one of them is a criminal. The other one is a policeman in, who is questioning the criminal. So as you can imagine, I'm I'm having a lot of fun with it as well when I, I, I try to be creative. This wouldn't you wouldn't find this in a course book, you know, because often they are trying to stay away from mm, controversial topics, uh, and I don't I don't mind. I, I'm not afraid to to have uh, alcohol in like alcohol. I mean, like I'm not promoting alcohol, but maybe for example, one of the pers one of the people in the role play could be drunk. Yeah, so it could be one of the role plays. You would never find this in a course book. Yeah, or or a little bit of. Not necessarily violent, but I would say, for example, that somebody is really rude. Yeah, so that's dangerous. Again, they wouldn't put it in the book because then the students could start swearing. And in my role play, you know, I might have it. Yeah. The point is, um, it's it's like an emotional roller coaster when you when you do these role plays, and you never know what you're gonna get. And also, there will always be three role plays for you each lesson, and you will always. Uh, be with someone else. So even if you don't like one of the role plays, or for some reason it's a difficult role for you, which which could happen. This is not you for you. You know, it's like uh, maybe maybe it's too ex you have to be too extroverted or too weird or insane. Some people like it, but I understand when for some people it's uncomfortable. Even if you don't like one role play, you you will probably like the next one. Or even if there is one person uh, that you don't have the chemistry. You know, you can't. Nothing is per. Nothing is ever perfect. So you might have two students who don't really get on. You will always be with someone else. I will make sure that in my course you will always be with someone else. So it's it's just like what I would do in any any other classroom. I should probably address a few questions here. Um, talking of one's level, if we get enrolled in the course, would we take an exam? Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is not a Cambridge exam course. This is a course that I want to show my students how they can improve their English, how they can approach English from a different angle, you know, and how can how they can see that English learning English can be fun because I know a lot of students are anxious, a lot of students basically get stressed when they have to speak, a lot of students don't have the opportunities. They so many excuses. I don't have anyone to speak to. Well, there are so many people on the internet. You just have to make the connections with people, you know? You have to uh, make friends, and it's not easy. And it's nice to do it through a course like that. And uh, then you can keep talking to each other. You can keep practicing long after the course, you know? So, um, but there is no exam as such. Although I could do like a test. I could prepare a test. I haven't I haven't incorporated it yet in the... In the course, but I think I should. I should probably do that. But I won't give you any kind of certificate that this is your level. You have reached this level. That's not how it works. This is not a certified Cambridge exam, a Cambridge course, or something, you know. But if you really want to, because obviously I, I always I understand the levels. Yeah, I've I've got a lot of experience teaching students um, of different levels from elementary all the way up to C two level. I can always tell you what your level is. You know. Ju judging by your English, I can just sort of look at your weaknesses and strengths, and I can tell you about that. If you're interested, I can gi always give you this kind of feedback. That's part of my job, to give my students feedback. I could tell you your strong points, your weak points, the things you, you should work on. And um, um, obviously, I when I do this course, when I manage this course, I will be uh, making notes about your mistakes. Yeah. So I, usually, I don't interrupt the role plays. Uh, unless uh, I have to, like if there is some kind of communication breakdown 
if uh, people stop talking or one doesn't understand the other, I might step in and just say, okay, you need to say it like that or whatever. But most of the time I'll just make notes, not on my hand, but in a Google document. And then um, the final activity is that we go through the mistakes or if there is no time left, I can send it to you as homework. And then you can correct yourself and ask me questions next time. And uh, and usually the mistakes also repeat. You know, you have the repeated mistakes. It's what we call fossilized errors. And um, you know, that's that's one thing that you don't get if you just listen to podcasts, watch YouTube videos, and never pay for an English teacher. If you never pay for a private English teacher, or if you never take any course. You will never know like what your mistakes are because I'm not gonna correct your English otherwise. You know this is this is part of my job and I, I uh, it's i you know I, I love correcting my students' mistakes because I know how important this is. You know, um, if no one ever corrects you, uh, then how can you improve? How can you know that something is wrong? You know. So I, I love doing that, but at the same time, I don't get too obsessed with it because some teachers, they just correct every single thing. And then the students, they get stressed and they, they, they will be afraid to talk because they will always have their teacher in their head and they will always be afraid. Oh, am I saying this right or not? No, no, no that's not what I do. Yeah, um, I try to do it in a, in a responsible way, in a, in a meaningful way. So. Um, okay, Monica, it's great to have you here as well. Monica has showed up, he's watching now the live stream. And I think we have Pablo here as well on Instagram. And Pablina was here too. It's it's great to talk to you guys. Um I hope I hope this is this is going well because I honestly I don't have much experience with this, but I think it's nice to talk nice to talk to you and just 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 tell you in this kind of way because often it feels like a bit distant when i record some kind of an ad you know like an advert for my course and i say you join my course this is what you get it feels like a little bit artificial doesn't it sometimes so i think i'm just on genuinely trying to tell you what this course is about what you're getting there um okay so you know what? I could share my screen with you now, just to show you. I just I'm going through my notes here. So if if you're watching on YouTube, I'm gonna be sharing my screen. If you're watching on Instagram, you're not getting any of this. You might as well jump onto my YouTube channel instead. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen if I figure it out here. It's always uh, it's always a question whether that's going to work. But I think I managed that. Okay, so you can now see my notes, right? I, I assume you can see this. I assume you can see this. So these are my notes about the course. So um, yeah, so I, I said it's six lessons. Each lesson is eighty minutes. Two, it takes the course takes two weeks, and it's always Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, eight p.m. Central European time. So if you are in a different time zone, you just have to convert your time. Don't ask me to do that because my maths, uh, maths is not my strong suit. It's not my strong point. Um, so, yeah, focus is speaking fluency. That is the main thing. Yeah, I want to help you with your fluency. Why do learners need it? Because they are always, they are often not always, but often they are very shy. They don't have enough practice. Uh, there is, you never have enough practice. Never. Especially if if English is not your job, especially if you don't communicate with your colleagues in your work, especially if um, if you don't have English speaking friends, if most of the time you speak in your native language, that's why you probably struggle with fluency. You know, because everybody needs to practice. Some people might you, might might have done it in the past. Maybe you used to live in England or an English speaking country, and you had practice on a daily basis. And now I f you feel like your English is going down again. That's because everybody needs everybody needs this. You know, I'm lucky. I'm lucky enough because English is my job. I teach English, so I speak English all the time. Also, all my hobbies, like ninety percent of my hobbies, are in English, except running. Well, that's also in English because whenever I go running. I listen to a podcast, so you just need a lot of exposure to English. You just need to absorb it, you know. And but, like I said before, 
not just passively. You also need to actively use it. You need to produce some kind of output. Yeah, that's why speaking fluency. That's why these role plays that I designed for you. They force you. They 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 make you speak. Even if you don't want to speak, you will have to speak because there is someone on the other side, and they, this won't work if you guys don't work together. You know, I think it's pretty it's pretty obvious. Um, on my YouTube channel, you can find the advert for for uh, the the role plays course. I can just I don't know if you can see this. I don't know. No, you no. I I'm sharing the the, the wrong thing. But um, uh, if you go to my YouTube channel and you type in "new English course with role plays, practice your English in a fu in funny and silly situations," then you should be able uh, to see this advert just just to get an idea what what a role play is if you have never heard it or seen it before. So why is this effective? Why is a role play effective? It's actually one of the most um, sort of respected activities by the industry, by the English teaching industry, the most experts um, in this industry. So these are people who are, um, who are uh, academics and, and who are basically big names in like didactics and pedagogy and how to teach English, you know, how to, how should you teach English? And a role play is a speaking activity, which they love because you have what's called information gap. Okay. I know I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit geeky here, but information gap means that you get your role, but you don't know what your part, what role your partner has. Your partner gets a role, but it's a different kind of role. And then you have to interact. You have to speak to each other and, you don't know what the other partner has. So that's the information gap and you need to make it work. So it sort of reflects or it mirrors real life. That's why this is so effective. That's why it's so popular. That's why it's so recognized and respected because uh, it, it mirrors real life. Yeah. Uh, so, so I designed the whole course around these role plays. Usually in a book, you will find a role play here and there occasionally, you know, but not the whole course. Not you don't do role plays all the time. This course is just not just role plays, but uh, there is always a role play, but three role plays actually each time. Uh, is a question is I like these are questions I, I made myself. Um, by the way, I should probably see if I if I have some questions from the viewers here. Is then I leave, I need to leave the chat. Oh no, please don't leave, Nina. But I have two questions. What the, what's the price of the course? And do you plan to do the course after holiday season? Listen, Nina, I would love to do that. I would love to do that, but it depends on the students. If I find enough students, if I get enough participants, please let your friends know. Help, help me out. Let your friends know, and this will be it. Will be easier for me to to make the groups because once I have the people, I can always do it. Yeah, the price. Okay, I usually in a webinar they will tell you the price at the end. Uh, after a long build-up, but I'm, as you know, I'm, I'm terrible at marketing, so I'm just going to tell you straight away. Um, I set the price for 39 euro at the moment, which, as I told you, my private lesson with me, 45 minutes, is 20 euro. Yeah, uh, but this course you will pay just 39 euro. It's not a private lesson because you've got other participants, but it's a lot of, lot of minutes if you count it. Yeah, so it's six. No, this is this is number six. Should I do it like that? I don't know. Six 80 minute lessons. So, oh my God, can somebody count it for me? 80 minutes time six is four, 480 minutes. So you pay 39 euro for 480 minutes, I believe, right? With me and other participants. Whereas if you paid for one private lesson with me, it would be 20 euro for 45 minutes. So you can see like how you can see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to make something affordable for for people and um, and yet obviously yet it has to be quality product. yeah, it can't be just uh, because often when it's cheaper, it is quality product is just less it's just not always focused on you because I'm, I'm I'm gonna be there with you, but I will be once observing one pair and the next time the the other pair while you are talking simultaneously, just as I would do in the in a language school, yeah where I would just walk around the class 
and check what the pairs are talking about, make notes about their language, occasionally correct them and things like that. But I would not always be able to focus on one student, right? Because there are more students, right? So that's that's it, that's it. Hopefully that answers your question, Nina. Uh, before you go, basically, if you're interested, please email me. I need to find one unified way how people can um, basically reach out to me. Email me if you're interested and we will do this via an email. There are other ways to contact me, obviously, but email would be the best. So teachersdenek at gmail.com. I think it's quite generous, Nina. I agree. I agree. Uh, you know, I know what I'm doing. Okay. It's it's a course like uh, I've got experience teaching, you know, so I, I'm, I like to create my own activities, but I've also used a, a course book, you know, and to be honest, course books, uh, they have designed the exercises in a way that they work, but they are not always interesting, right? Because they need to find some, some, some kind of a common ground, yeah? And the topics are very generic, like family, sports, uh, environment. This can get boring, but my topics are at the hospital, um, relationships, uh, crime. I try to go for something that will bring a lot of like emotional, emotional experience for you, you know? So you're going to be in, in crazy situations. You will see if you join the course, you will see. Um, okay. I will see if I can receive it. The Instagram Nina, I, I I'm still new to this, so I can. I'm trying to figure it out, but I, I should probably hire somebody to do my Instagram. But unfortunately, I'm not there yet. Um, I will see what I can do to share some Instagram stories. I should also show show uh, the people from the course, but then it's I need to get their approval. It's not always easy, you know. I would like to show you like some parts of the course just to show you what the people are doing, so that you get the idea. I will do it sooner or later, but it's not always easy because I need to ask people. They are not always comfortable with it. I would also like to get the reviews from the former participants, but then again, you would be surprised. People are not always up for it. People don't want to record videos of themselves and putting it out on the internet. Not everybody is like me, you know. Often people are shy or self-conscious, you know. They, they think their English is really terrible and they don't want to... They don't want uh, their friends to see it. Obviously, I think this is ridiculous, but you know, I have to respect that. Yeah. Um, but uh, I will try to let you know about this more. Okay. So, um, like I said, this, this course is about fluency. I'm going to be teaching you vocabulary. I, I, the idea is that I want to help you get more confident. I want to. Mm, put you in different situations, sort of uh, expose you to different crazy situations and you will have to deal with it. It's like you will be thrown off, th sorry, you will be thrown in at the deep end, basically. And you will just have to deal with it. Uh, we're going to be using Discord. If you are new to this platform, if you are terrified of it, don't worry. It's easy. And I'm going to hold your hands. I'm literally going to hold your hands. I'm going to show you the ropes. I'm going to explain everything to you you're gonna be fine you know it's not as hard as you as you might think but we need to test it before you join the course so that i can see that the discord works for you and you you are comfortable with it obviously another idea is that you make friends along the way uh, i would like you guys to um i would like you guys to have that experience i can't always guarantee this because everybody's different but i think uh, what i find is that often people who join my course um or the discord server um, they often start talking to each other independently of me which is which is exactly my what my dream is you know i want all my students to to be able to practice their english in their free time to make connections with other people so that i don't even have to be there you know because then it, uh, it feels like the most important th uh, part of my job if i manage to do that it's like it's it's the it's it's more important than teaching someone how to use present perfect. If I know I showed my my students a way they can practice English in their free time and they follow this path, they follow my advice, and it works for them. And this is just brilliant. This is just the best. Exp this is just the best feeling for me as a teacher. Most the most rewarding and satisfying feeling is if I see if I. 
if I change my students' uh, way of thinking, if I if I change their mindset, they they will they will become more more um, comfortable speaking to strangers, uh, making connections with people through English, through using English. That's that's the best thing ever. You know, I, I know it's maybe I'm shooting myself in the foot because I should have private students and make a lot of money, but this is more important for me actually, because I know that's what everybody needs, you know. But sometimes people need the teacher. People need the teacher because they the teacher will guide, the teacher will tell you when you should show up for the lesson, and the teacher will tell you off if you don't show up, the teacher will tell you off if you don't bring your homework. You know, it's the classic. People need sometimes direction. We need somebody to be our mentor. So I understand this as well. And that's why I have this course. Do we have any questions from anyone? I hope this is clear. Hi, Adam. Good to have you here. Um, yes. And the last point here about the course is that I want you guys to have fun. Yeah. I don't like when lessons are boring, you know, because personally, uh, I need to enjoy. I'm, I'm a bit of a... What do you what do you call th th that kind of person? Uh, bohemian, bohemian. Yeah, it's like I hate a routine. You know, I just hate things that you do just because you do them. I want to see some sort of. I need to see some sort of. Um, pff, how to explain this? Some sort of magic moments, jokes, humor, um, emotional highs. You know, like emotional experiences. That's what I'm trying to uh, convey. In this course as well. That's why I designed the role plays the way I did. A little bit controversial, you know. Uh, so, but uh, but um, not in a way that I would uh, insult anyone or not like that. Controversial in the way that you have to interact with each other. I'm not trying to insult anyone. I always respect my students, and I, I'm 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 trying to be reasonable as well. Yeah. Okay, so guys, I've, I don't know if this is enough. I guess it is. I've been talking for a long time, over an hour. So if you've got any questions, um, Pablo says that he will contact me later. Thank you, Pablo. If you guys have any questions, uh, you can ask now. If, if it's not clear what I told you, please ask now. Please, if you could like this video because um, it's not because I am uh, vain and I collect likes. And uh, of course, it's always nice to get a like, but it's more about the fact that there is this YouTube algorithm. So when pe when more people like the video, it will uh, reach more people. More people will be able to see, like random strangers will see the video, and that's how the algorithm works. So that would it would really help me if you could just like this video. Basically, simple as that. Even a comment helps actually. Even if you comment, um, that helps a lot. And please tell your friends if you have a friend, yeah, that you think that might want to join the course, bring him on, bring him on, you know, her or her if it's a woman, uh, sexist, me, sexist. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, um, you know the price, thirty nine euro. You know what you're getting. Uh, the next course starts next Monday. Did I say that? Next Monday, which is the what it is? What is it? Today is the 30th. Next Monday is what? Sorry, I'm a bit confused. Is it the 5th? I think it's the 5th. Yeah, the 5th of July at 8 p.m. Central European time. Bye, Nina. Thank you for watching. Um, the next one starts on Monday, provided we have enough people. Yeah, it's, it's quite likely that we will have enough people. We need at least four. But uh, if you want to join, you should do it now, uh, because I the first time people joined, the course was cheaper. Now it's a little bit more expensive. I want to make it more expensive in the future once it's more like streamlined. You know, once I add features like tests and things. But for now, I think the the price is this is fair, thirty nine euros. Yeah. So if you want to join the course, send me an email. And then we can discuss this further. I will invite you into the Discord group. Uh, we can talk about your payment. You can just say, hi, I'm James. I want to join your course or something like that. But actually, if you are James, you probably don't want to join the course because 
James is an English name, so your English is good enough. But let's say your name is um, Juan. So you say, hi, I'm Juan. I would like to join your course. Or, hi, I am, um, I am Vladimir Putin. I don't know whoever wants to join my course. Uh, even if it's even Vladimir Putin can join my course. If, if Vladimir is watching this, I doubt it. But you know, anyone can join as long as your level is B2 and C1. Do you know what Vladimir level is? Do you know what Vladimir's level is? I should say. I don't. I have no clue. I haven't heard him speak English. But uh, anyway, um, how how do you pay me? We will talk about the payment later once once I make sure that you can use Discord, that you have time, that you can you can commit to this course. I first want to discuss it with you via emails, or even we can call each other on on a social media platform. I don't know WhatsApp, whatever, Skype, and then I will ask you to pay for the course before the course starts. Yeah, even if it's like the a day before, or even on the same day of the course starting. Uh, because once you pay, that means you will commit to the course, you know, and I, I have got, I, I have a guarantee that there will be people, this is important to, to pay beforehand. Otherwise people might just join and then, I don't know, do something else. And then uh, everybody will uh, basically suffer because of that, because we will not have enough people, but uh, it's easy. You can pay me via PayPal. I've got an UK British, British account or or check check account as well there are, there are different options different ways you can pay me so you know that's that i think i've i've said everything i wanted uh, monica who is watching this stream um says that the discord group is great yeah once again if you go to teachersdenek.com and you click on the discord icon that's where you can join the discord group and even if you don't want to join my course if you, even if you don't if you can't afford this this course that I'm offering to you today, even if you don't want to do any private lessons with me, you can always just join this Discord group and take part in the events that we do there because they are super cool. There are regular events on different days, in different in at different times with different people, English teachers often or very high level English learners, and they are super cool. Trust me and different kind of events games discussions fun conversations you name it so this is something you can always do and i highly recommend um um joining the discord group and i think that's that's it for me i think i've i've been i've been rambling for a long time and i need to take a break uh, i need to have a sip of water and whatnot so Thank you very much, everyone, for watching this stream. I hope everything has been clear. And if not, you know where to find me. Um, yeah, I might do one of these later in the future. Anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing from you again, guys. Thanks thanks very much for, for watching here on Instagram. Finally, I'm looking at you. Yeah, I, I, I didn't do that because I'm mostly looking at my laptop. And thank you very much to you, to YouTube people as well. And if you are both, if you were watching both on YouTube and Instagram, then you're extra special, extra crazy. Thank you for doing both. All right, guys, take care, everyone. And I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.